So I think I started in 1982, I think it was. Um, a bunch of us had been invited to go down to the Franklin River to help set up the blockade because our exploits in northern New South Wales where our blockades had uh, resulted in the uh, historic decision to protect the rainforests of New South Wales. Um, so we've been invited down to Tassie to set up the blockade uh, to stop the damming of the Franklin River and the flooding of the uh, temperate rainforest wilderness in the southwest. And uh, <coughs> that uh, um, turned into the biggest uh, such action in Australian history. More than 3,000 people came from all over the country to this remote area. Uh, more than 1,500 people were arrested. And we timed the blockade to coincide with the run-up to the federal elections in 1982. And uh, coming up uh, in the last couple of weeks before the elections, uh, um, the blockade at the Franklin was driving all of the political discussions off the front page. And the leader of the opposition, Bob Hawke, seeing the writing on the wall, uh, suddenly promised that if elected, uh, the ALP would stop the dam. And that's what we've been waiting for. Um, we fanned out to 11 marginal electorates around the country, um, where less than two percentage points separated the political parties in the polls. We went from door to door, and um, each of those electorates swung to the Labor Party. And Bob Hawke's first words when he was elected were, the dam will not be built. And there's this famous uh, photograph of him and Bob Brown with their arms around each other's shoulders grinning um, at the election results. So that was the beginning of a honeymoon with uh, the ALP uh, that lasted for a couple of years. And uh, during that time, um, I was with the Rainforest Information Centre in northern New South Wales, in Lismore, and we had started the first internet service provider in the country outside the government or the universities. It was called Pegasus Networks. And for that reason, we um, uh, received an email from the Environmental Defence Fund in Washington saying that they wanted to start an international campaign to reform the environmental policies of the World Bank and the other multilateral development banks. Um, we didn't know anything about it, but we quickly learned about it and joined that uh, campaign. <coughs> and uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to end my story with uh, a song that I wrote uh, about that campaign. But um, pretty soon we realised that uh, um, Bilateral aid was 85% um, of the Australian aid program from country to country it didn't involve multi multilateral banks. And uh, it had exactly the same policies as the World Bank because it was just a revolving door where someone would be working for the World Bank one year and then they'd be working for the Australian government the next year. And so we started a campaign to reform the Australian Government Development Assistance Bureau. We uh, uh, en enlisted a a coalition of environment groups and um, social justice groups, I suppose, freedom from hunger, community aid abroad, Greenpeace, Wilderness Society, etc. We had a letterhead with all of their letterheads on it, so three quarters of the page was letterheads and there was just a little room in the bottom for whatever we wanted to say. And uh, in this way, we were able to successfully lobby for a um, Senate inquiry into the environmental effects of the Australian aid program. Uh, that inquiry wound its way along and uh, at the end um, they accepted all of our submissions and they insisted on extraordinary changes to the uh, Australian aid program that uh, now uh, environmental impact statements had to accompany every project which hadn't been required before and Australian environmental laws had to be obeyed even if they were working in a country without any environmental laws of their own. But most interesting was that they um, uh, created a funding window called the NGO Environment Initiative where a million dollars a year was to go to environment groups um, 
to create new standards of environmental excellence in the delivery of Australian aid. So we had been such a thorn in AusAid's side that we knew that we'd never see any of that money. But to my amazement, every proposal that we put to them over the next couple of years got funded immediately. And uh, I realised that um, they were hoping that we would have this conflict of interest where receiving money from them, we wouldn't be able to criticise them any longer. And indeed, we saw that too. And so we, um, the woman who had been running both the World Bank campaign and the AusAid campaign, Carol Sherman, um, she got together with Lee Rhiannon, uh, who was then working for Freedom from Hunger, but went on to become um, uh, a Green Party senator. Um, they got together and we helped them to start a new organisation called Aid Watch to continue harassing AusAid so we, we could get on with spending their money without any conflict. <laughs> so one of the projects, uh, we got projects funded in India, in uh, um, Ecuador, in Siberia, um, and one of the projects was in the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. And uh, this was uh, a project to, uh, um, well, let's see. I'd been invited over to the Solomon Islands in the first place by a community leader from North New Georgia, Joe Dudley Torsinga, from the uh, uh, village of Paradise in North New Georgia. And his uh, community, the, um, uh, the Karoga people, had walked through the night, 200 men had walked through the night and burned down the logging town at Barora, uh, belonging to uni leaders, uh, uni leaders Pacific Timbers. And so they, that was their kind of credentials when they came looking for help and um, that uh, stole my heart away, of course, that story. And, um, so we went over there and travelled uh, in a dugout canoe, like just uh, canoe built from the trunk of a single tree with an outboard motor at the back and a 44 gallon drum uh, in the middle and uh, looking at uh, the uh, forest and the, uh, <coughs> the person that was uh, um, guiding us through this was uh, a cousin of Joe Dudley's uh, called Vincent Baguni who was a, um, on the executive of the, um, of the um, legislature of the Western Province of the Solomon Islands, and whose first son was named John C. Laguni. And um, <laughs> um, I had my guitar with me, and I was there with my friend Andy Frame, and uh, uh, we were singing the songs that we'd sung at Terrania Creek and at the Franklin River. And uh, Vincent loved the songs, and he, you know, he said, "Oh, if only we had songs like that, uh, we would definitely be able to get rid of the loggers." And so I said, well, just write one. And he, he, he didn't want to, so he said, will you write one for us? And so this is the song I wrote for uh, Vincent McGurney. Men dance by 
so strong that we got an invitation to come to Sydney uh, and to see the Premier, uh, who was then Neville Rand. And um, we were amazed, uh, three of us, uh, Nan Nicholson and um, Victoria Murphy and I went down to see him and Victoria had her uh, daughter Fernanda on her breast as we walked into the Premier's office and the media was there and they were stunned. Why was the uh, Premier seeing these hippies? And, uh, he ushered us in and we had cups of tea and he said, uh, uh, he started to talk to us about his love of the bush. And he talked about going bushwalking with Milo Dunphy and all of these things and suddenly an hour had gone past and we were, what was happening? And he said, I suppose you've come here because you want me to save Terrania Creek. We said, yes. And he said, I'm sorry to tell you that that's not my job. He said, my job is to hold this whole thing uh, together while you create the public opinion that's going to allow me to legislate for that, but I can't be involved in that, you'll have to do that, and nothing would make me happier than if you allow, you know, if, if you allow that to happen. And so we walked out of his office, and um, the media were all like, what did he say, what did he say? And we said, no comment. And uh, we, walked, we walked out. Anyway, it was a great uh, lesson for me in, um, in you know, um, politics and uh, I'm just telling that story because uh, um, my guest here tonight is um, uh, Jill Ran and uh, her daughter and my friends and so I'm just so uh, grateful to Neville for all that he did for us. Thank you. 